Tanzania's coast has beautiful islands and shorelines, with long white sandy beaches and crystal clear waters. The astonishing diversity of marine life attracts tourists, conservationists and researchers from all over the world to Tanzania. Our research team came from the University of Dar es Salaam, the State University of Zanzibar and the Norwegian University of Life Sciences. We cooperated throughout with national, district and village authorities and we interacted closely with the villagers and other coastal actors. Our research observed that tourism and conservation can create positive outcomes, but if implemented badly they can cause dire hardships for coastal communities. Initially, we studied Mafia Island, which hosts the largest marine park in Africa, where conservation started well, but later went badly wrong, including the brutal use of military violence against civilians. We documented official intentions. Our research revealed that the villagers held very different perspectives based upon their experiences of the park's actions. And we witnessed how the Tanzanian state intervened in favor of justice and human rights. Later, we observed some positive and inspiring examples in Mbudia and Zanzibar Islands, wherein conservation was managed by coastal communities themselves. <laughs> And we recorded some cases wherein tourism actually offered benefits to neighboring villages. First of all, let's take a look at some of this biodiversity that attracts so many actors to Tanzania's coast and islands. Tanzania hosts over 1,000 species of marine fishes. This angelfish has inhabited this same coral head for several years the juvenile of the same species. A highly toxic scorpion fish displays its spines. A pair of powder blue surgeon fish circle each other. This juvenile clownfish stays close to its anemone. Clownfishes can change sex and the largest one is always a female. An inquisitive butterfly fish and a school of snappers swim by. All these colorful fishes inhabit coral reefs, where the keystone species are the corals themselves. There are more than 270 species of corals of many shapes and colors. Since this exceptionally high marine biodiversity is what attracts so many outsiders, let's take some very quick glimpses too at some of the incredible variety of invertebrates found in Tanzanian marine waters. But all this marine biodiversity does not exist in isolation from people. Coastal villages are the custodians of these biologically diverse waters. The ocean provides food security and income for coastal communities. Villagers have profound knowledge of marine resources and ecology based upon lifetimes of experience and inherited from past generations. These men dive for fish and invertebrates on a reef, while these women encircle fishes in a lagoon for subsistence and income. Blue trevally can grow up to a meter long, and Malabar grouper can weigh up to 150 kilos, fetching key income to a fisher's family. Small-scale fisheries are crucially important for the food security and incomes of hundreds of thousands of people in coastal Tanzania. Village elders and elected leaders govern traditional and local coastal fishery management systems, and in these situations fishing is practiced sustainably and democratically. They explain that the destruction and overfishing is predominantly perpetrated by large-scale or urban-based fisheries. 
An industrial trawler uproots the seagrasses in its path, destroying the fish's habitat. For Tanzania, offshore fishing of tuna could constitute a major and sustainable opportunity for future fisheries development, which would not conflict with inshore small-scale fisheries. Currently, however, these enormously valuable tuna resources are being fished and overfished by industrial fishing corporations from outside the Indian Ocean, a clear case of oceanic neo-imperialism. Local fisherfolk strongly oppose and even risk their lives to prevent destructive fishing practices. Small-scale fishers wonder why some conservationists and researchers blame destruction and overfishing on them. Seaweed farming is another important activity of the people of Tanzania's islands. Tens of thousands of seaweed farmers, mostly women, grow Yukima seaweeds which are a valuable export product. Tanzania is the world's fourth major producer. Tourism is also a key economic sector and is Tanzania's highest foreign exchange earner. Zanzibar is a world-renowned marine tourism destination. We shall visit several Tanzanian islands, starting with Mafia in the south, northward to small Mbudja Island, across to Nguja, Zanzibar Island, and finally north to Pemba Island. We start our journey in Mafia. Let's go out with Nahoda and his crew to fish with a gill net. The next morning the net is taken up and Nahoda Salamala shows us a trebly. Juma Mwinyi disentangles a swimming crab. Since it is not a target species, he carefully returns it to the sea. Another morning we join Nahoda and his crew to fish by handline. In the 1970s to 90s, dynamite fishers from outside Mafia came and blasted coral reefs. Mafia's fishing communities felt overpowered and requested government support to stop the dynamiting. In 1995, Mafia Island Marine Park was established. The park authorities and WWF cooperated with the villagers to jointly arrest illegal dynamiters. This unique collaboration was highly successful and the dynamite fishing was completely halted within just two years. Mafia Island Marine Park appeared to be a success story at this stage. Amin Abdallah, the current warden in charge, explains the policy and management of Mafia Island Marine Park. hifadhi kamati hizi zina wajibu mkubwa sana kwanza kwa kuwa wavuvi wengi wanaishi katika jamii ya vijiji kwa hiyo inakuwa ni rahisi kuwatambua wavuvi na aina ya uvuvi ambao wanaofanya na kwanza kuchukua hatua katika ngazi ya vijiji na vile vile kushirikiana na hifadhi kutoa taarifa kwa wale ambao ni wakaidi ili kuweza kusimamia zaidi na kuchukua sheria Sasa tumekuwa tukifanya pamoja na 
wanajamii wa mafia kwa sasa zaidi ya ya, ya, ya miaka ishirini zaidi mambo yamekuwa yakwenda vizuri na kuna changamoto sasa tunafanya katika masuala ya strategic adaptive management there is another side to the story of mafia in this video the villagers voices feature two Residents of several villages explain the history and present status of Mafia Island Marine Park. They express their views on how its policies and management have affected their lives. Hifadhi ilipokuja ilikuja kwa vizuri sana na ikatuburudisha vizuri sana. Kufikia walipopata mahitaji yao walitukata kabisa na mpaka sasa hivi wanatuzamisha ilipokuja hifadhi ilitueleza kwamba tutakuwa pamoja tushirikiane tulinde uharibifu na mimi katika mmoja mimi nilikuwa mwenyekiti wa hifadhi sasa ukitia nanga inavunja jiwe ukitia nyavu inavunja jiwe ukiweka dema unavunja jiwe ukitupa mshipi unavunja jiwe mpaka jarife nu wanatukatia baharini Ukitosa bahari jarife wakija kikuta wanakata madema wanakata wanaachia Ukitega mwani naambia mama una hali hizo zingira usitege mwani hapo zamani tangu mababu na mabibi na mababu mpaka leo kipungua nini kilichopungua kwa vile kero hili sisi limetuuma sana lakini hatuna kufanza mtu katoka bala anaijua mashauri ya pwani Ayayui. kutokana na kero la jiwani la hifadhi ya bahari kuanzia mwanzo walivyokuja walikuja vizuri na mimi mwenyewe nikiwa mjumbe wa kamati ya hifadhi ya bahari mwanzo kabisa ilipoanzia kwaenda kidogo wameanza kubadilika jamaa marine park wamebadilika heli ya simba kwanza wakaanza kutoa mitego ya nyavu akakopesha yani wale watu waliochukua mikopo wakaanza kujua kuweka samaki vizuri kwenye koki na kuwapeleka dar es baada ya kuona hawa sasa hivi washakuwa wanaweza uwezo kama huu wa kuachukua samaki kuwapeka Dar es Salaam wanajiuzia wenyewe wananunua wenyewe wakaanza sasa kuzuia bahari hawataki kila maeneo wanasema ya kwao hivyo kina mama sisi wanavua mwani kina mama alikuja akavuna mwani tele kwenye majumba paka mzee anaweka nje sasa tajiri kusema naye ikabidi sasa tajiri akasema mimi ili nipunguze hiyo mzigo basi nitaleta meli Meli yule akaileta hadi chole. Kuleta chole meli jamaa Marine Park wanataka wayangamize juani ili yangamie kabisa. Ah kumbe hawa kina baba tukiwafukuza baharini wanakuja kupumzikia kwenye hela ya mwani awake zao. Basi pale akafanyaje? Wakaizuia meli tukaenda hadi chole kwenye kikao. Tukija tukiongea. Katika tukiwauliza sababu gani mlifanya meli iondoke mpaka tajiri mumfukuze? Hali ka ngumu 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 ya kimaisha. Sasa hivi kijiji cha juani kimekabiliwa na hatari. Ya njaa afya na elimu sisi tumepewa bahari hii hapa tuitumie hii jikondo la tunasomesha sisi baharini tunaishi sisi baharini na ukisema siku moja tu hawakwenda watu baharini kifo cha nchi hii wanaume kwa wanawake na fadhali ya wanaume kama sisi wanawake tunakufa na watoto kizazi kimepungua sisi kwa tabu tunaoipata nchi hii mwezi wa 4 sijasikia mtoto kazaliwa hapa jikondo hii hakuna kwa tabu tulionayo Mwanzo kabisa tulikuwa tuna radisi hifadhi kwamba sisi tunaambia hapa hifadhi ipo. Kwa maana kuna sehemu huwezi ukaenda kavua ila kuna muda wake maalumu wa kuna kuvua. Sisi tumezaliwa humu ndio hatuna kazi nyingine. Leo mtu unafika anadhamishwa chombo chake na, na wale zamishaji wanakwenda kule. Halafu wao kwa kuwa na pesa wanakwenda kutoa pesa wale waliozamishwa ndio hawana haki kufanya ina maana itafika hatua watu wa wale kwa sababu nyumbani hapana chakula mimi tumboni hamna kitu na, nataka kuvua hapo na wewe ndio upo hapo na mtutu mimi tabidi niingie kuvua tu wewe matokeo yake mimi kuangalia sana viongozi kule tukakubaliana kwamba nendeni mkawaone hao wavuvi muelewane nao mupange uvuvi mkalione ile tandio linapofanya kazi kule walikubali lakini tukija hapa tukipanga na wavuvi hapa wakakataa hawakuja moja kwa moja kwa vile wao walikusudia moja kwa moja kufanya ubaya tu. Wao na sisi tumevunja maelewano kabisa. Hatukukubaliana mpaka kamati zikafa kati hapa moja kwa moja. Hifadhi ya bahari inatunyanyasa sana mafia. 
na hawataki ushirikiano na sisi sisi kama wajumbe kama tayari ushauri tunakaa kwenye kamati tunapozungumza yale mkero za wananchi wao wanasema kichukua hapa ni kukamata tu haina ushirikishaji wananchi wala serikali ya kijiji wala mkuu wa wilaya mimi na swali kidogo ipo si leo tuko huru wa kuzungumza hatuna tatizo mbele hakuna tatizo mwiki tunauliza mimi hapo na hakuna adabu tuko huru sana ndio maana naanga nataka hivyo mimi jamani sina mengi ninathibitisha viongozi wa jumla waliozungumza pamoja na mimi kwa upande wa hifadhi ni maadui maadui nikiwa ya mafunzo yao na nashukuru nimekwenda nimemaliza na cheti nimepata katika tu wendao pet cheti nimepata peke yangu mmoja hapo nasema kwa upande wa hifadhi mafao nilipata lakini wale maadui moja kwa moja hawafai mimi siku zote katika mikutano hapa nasema hifadhi katika kitu kisichofaa sasa hapa kati ya mashauri na hifadhi ya bahari mimi naona hapa wote tuko kia moto kwa sababu huyu huku anatuambia vingine na huyu anatuambia vingine huyu anakuambia katherson sio katherson na huyu anakuambia chukua kibali sasa kibali anakupa huyu maeneo ya jamii mikasi mitupu nakumbuka aliponizamisha pale walikuwa na boti yao iendayo kasi mimi nilikuwa na mtumbo wangu nyangu zangu zikapotea na kweli walikiri kwamba kweli walizamisha mheshimiwa msume akasema hapana ndugu zangu nyinyi nafaa mrudi nyumbani na nyangu zenu mzali zishapotea nishapotea mrudi nyumbani sasa tutaishi vipi tu nyumbani ukasema na familia zetu akaniambia bwana nakuambia ni hivyo ndio hivyo kwa maana mtapenda mahakamani mtapenda polisi mtapata tabu nyinyi sio mimi mengi tu adonge tu kule wala sendi matukio yake tarehe 22 mimi naenda Berlin na kamatwa tena tumeenda nazo kesi zile katika kwanza kwanza tunavulia tunavua maji haba pili tunaharibu sakafu ya bahari tatu tunawatisha samaki baharini kwa kutumia vile vio wakati wao wenyewe watumia gesi sasa vichekesho kwa maana hiyo bado kandala kesi ile akaja ndugu pagu anaongea mbele ya mahakama kwamba kutumia kio baharini na kiatu mnaatisha samaki Sisi tukaambia wewe mwenyewe pango mbona unatumia gesi? Sasa nikitumia mimi mtu wa chini naambiwa kwamba haramu. Wazungu wenyewe wanakuja, wanatumia gesi. Gesi chini inavuma, mimi sijatumia gesi inavuma. Yaani hapa sheria hamna kabisa. Yaani sehemu zao, 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 zetu zao. Mimi na haramu. Mtu hata ipasi. Wakanikuta na nyavu kati tatu. Akaniambia huo nguvu sisi hatutaki mimi nikamwambia huu utaki wewe au utaki sheria akaniambia sisi tu ndo hatutaki nikabanda nini kabla shafi kabanda nini tunakeka chambo chetu tunatoa nyavu tunaikuta boti kubwa inakuja ya hifadhi bila bwana wetu tufana tukabeba nyavu zetu tukaondoka chombo chetu tukakeka pale matoke yake akaja yale kufika ndipo katika chombo chetu tikaja boti mbili matoke yake akafika akafunga chombo wakaondoka chombo chetu akachukua mwezi wa ngapi mwezi wa kumi. ukatudishia huu mwezi wa pili wa mbona kukuta chombo kibovu mpaka tuka tujavulia na tuna nini ya yote kwamba tumehangaika tukaenda huku tukaenda huku mpaka tumefika kwa mkoa Elaya ndio kidogo ndio tumekipata lakini nia ilikuwa kutupa chombo hawana lakini unaweza zikachukuliwa nyavu hapa zikapelekwa kule siku mbili tatu ukasikuta nyavu zimepotea zimeshauzwa tayari sasa vitu namna hivi sisi vinatukela na tulivyokakubaliana hapo mwanzo hatukukubaliana hivyo mwisho wa siku tunakuja kuingiliwa hata sisi wavuvi wadogo wadogo wanyavu ndogo ambao tuna uvuvi wa hali ya chini mpaka sasa hivi tunaogopa hata kwenda baharini kufanya shughuli za uvuvi having heard 14 statements from six villages in mafia we will now listen to analytical summaries by two elected village chairpersons mimi nadhani katika kilichoongelewa hapa kero kubwa ni hifadhi wananchi wa kijiji cha Juani walikuwa hawajawahi kuwekwa hata ndani hata siku moja hawajawahi kuletewa wanajeshi kwa ukweli hifadhi imezidi kutudhalilisha hatua mpaka ya mwisho kabisa. Imefika hatua mpaka kutoma kusema kwamba tunatunga sheria ndogo ndogo za vijiji. Hifadhi ya bahari imeamua zile sheria kuzikataa zote. Japo zile sheria tumetunga kijijini. Zimepita halmashauri kila kijiji kitunge sheria zake ndogo ndogo kupitia mapato yake ya ndani. Hifadhi imeona hawa wana kijiji watafaidika. Tuna maeneo tengefu, tuna maeneo ya jumla lakini watu weupe ndio wanapovua hapo sehemu iliyokuwa haipo hiyo ndipo wanapozamia kusema kwamba kuchafua samaki wao wanatumia vioo wanatumia gesi lakini najua maslahi yako kwao maslahi yakiwa kwa wananchi wao wanakataa 
sio sheria hapa watu washakamatwa washawekwa ndani washapigwa na hii toka enzi ya ukoloni ilipoepo kipindi hiko cha nyuma hakuna haya leo hashirikishwi mwenyekiti wa kijiji hashirikishwi mtendaji wa kijiji wala mtendaji kata hashirikishwi amri yao ikitoka imetoka moja kwa moja si waitofai hifadhi watu wa hifadhi hawatofai hifadhi tumeikubali mashati yake mwanzo alikuwa mazuri tulikuwa tunakwenda kama alivyozungumza tulipata tukipata tulipata mikopo lakini hapo hizo hizo zote ndio shanyang'anya shachukua nyewe na tulikuwa tunapiga koki hapa samaki tunajaza hapa tunapeleka Dar es Salaam watoto wote walikuwa nasoma vizuri leo watoto sasa hivi hapa mgeuko umekuwa utapia mlo mlo hapo ulikuwa mara tatu tulikuwa tukiupata sasa hivi mlo wa mara moja hivi jioni sasa hivi unatabu yote haikuja kwa sababu ya hifadhi ya bahari kwa hivyo kilio chetu sisi wananchi tunapasa tuishi kama wanavyoishi wenzetu wengine tunastahili tupate haki kama haki za binadamu leo haki za binadamu sisi hatuna hatuna haki za kuishi hatuna haki za usalama hatuna haki za aina yoyote mimi naomba kwamba kilio chetu kisikike huko asante mimi kuhusu swala la hifadhi ya bahari wenyewe wetu hifadhi ya bahari wanasema kwamba ni marafiki kwetu lakini hifadhi ya bahari si marafiki kwetu ni adui kuliko ni adui besta Ashaku maneno si matusi nizungumze alisema kwamba afadhali umchezee mwili wake kulikoni kuichezea bahari nani msumi mkuu kwa ukumbi wa lizo waathirika wakubwa ni wale waliokuwemo ndani ya vijiji vilivyomo ndani ya hifadhi ya bahari waathirika wakubwa na tano akina mama walikwenda kitutia kwa ajili ya uchokoaji wa pweza Boti za hifadhi ya bahari wakiwemo na askari wasiopungua 19 boti mbili zilikwenda zikawavamia hawa kina mama na kuwapiga boti zao nyingine wakazivunja wakawanyang'anya matenke ya mafuta na mipira ili wasisafiri kuja majumbani mwao wavuvi kutoka Jibondo wamekwenda Kilindoni kwa ajili ya kuuza samaki wavuvi hawa walikamatwa wakafunguliwa kesi kesi ikanguruma mahakamani mahakama ikawa hukumu kile ambacho walichopaswa kuhukumiwa mahakama ikatoa ikatoa amri vifaa vyao vya uvuvi warudishiwe lakini kwa kiburi kikubwa watu wa hifadhi ya bahari wakaenda wakazuia vifaa vile hawakuvipata hawakuvipata mpaka leo mwaka na nane walikuja wanajeshi hapa wakapiga watu wakaumiza watu mwaka 2009 halmashauri ilitoa agizo kwamba zana zote haramu zisalimishwe zi kwa watendaji wa vijiji watu wa Jibondo kwa ridhaa yao waliziwasilisha nyavu zao zote pwani nami nikiwepo zikaja boti za hifadhi ya bahari wakiwemo na wanajeshi watu wa idara ya uvuvi wanasema nyavu za Jibondo ziko sawa sawa hazipaswi kuchukuliwa lakini watu wa hifadhi ya bahari kwa kiburi chao nyavu zile walizichukua wa 2014 vyombo ambavyo havikwenda baharini havina nyavu havina chochote viko pwani vimekuja kuchukuliwa na hifadhi ya bahari wakisingizia kwamba wamevikamata baharini lakini vyombo vile kwa kuona kwamba ni dhuluma ya dhahiri tukaweka kongamano tukakubaliana zile boti tukaenda tukazifuata lakini kama tulikuwa na makosa ya kuzifuata boti zile kwa vyovyote vyote vile tungeshtakiwa. Lakini hatukushtakiwa kwa kuwa tulikuwa sawa sawa kwa ajili ya kutetea haki zetu. Our research results confirmed the villagers explanations that despite a positive initial period, Mafia Island Marine Park and WWF had gradually discontinued cooperation with the villagers. They began to depict the villagers as destroyers and to use donor funding to exercise top-down management and coercion with force. After the quick elimination of a dynamite fishing, it seems they felt the need to invent a new threat to justify their continued funding from Norway via WWF. The park management excluded villages from more and more fishing areas and introduced increasingly strict measures to curtail traditional fishing and use of coastal resources. Relations between the villagers and Mafia Island Marine Park deteriorated. Park authorities confiscated fishers' boats and hundreds of meters of their nets each year. Fishers were frustrated because the park prescribed large mesh nets 
These do not catch small, plentiful and fast breeding fishes which swim through those nets. Ironically, large mesh nets selectively target large, slow growing fishes, making no sense in ecological or management terms. In tropical multi-species, multi-habitat fisheries, optimal management involves multiple gears including nets of various mesh sizes. There exists no simple one-size-fits-all solution. A democratic and just fisheries co-management approach is needed, centrally involving local fisherfolk themselves, based upon traditional knowledge together with modern science, harvesting and monitoring fishes of different sizes and life histories in sustainable ways. Sardines breed and grow fast, but never become large. Blue marlin, by contrast, can grow to be enormous. Clearly, therefore, one needs different gears and different mesh sizes for different fishes. WWF and the park claimed overfishing was a problem, but they had no scientific evidence. Our research, dive surveys and fish stock assessments confirmed that fishing levels in mafia were sustainable. WWF criticized our research publicly in 2011, but we refuted their claims and they withdrew their critique of our research. WWF departed from the park in 2012. FAO data indicate that catches of groupers show no signs of overfishing. Groupers can be early indicators due to their case-selected life cycles. Mafia Island Marine Park became a bad example of blue grabbing and neocolonial accumulation by dispossession. The villagers and their children's food security, health, incomes and livelihoods worsened. In 2007, villagers explained to us that fishers' rights was a key issue that needed to be addressed, so we jointly organised six workshops and we invited park managers and fisheries authorities to attend. In Tanzania, we were invited to present our research to the Parliament, Tanzania's National Assembly, and later in Norway, together with village chairperson Faki Ali Hassan, to the launching of the Fish for Development programme which was attended by Norway's Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Fisheries, NORAD and the Norwegian Research Council. In December 2008, at the behest of the park, army soldiers severely beat citizens in Jibondo and Kiagani villages. In February 2010, park rangers and army soldiers forcefully confiscated legal nets from Jibondo fishers. Villagers and researchers protested these violent injustices to both local and national government authorities. Mafia Island Marine Park appeared to be a failure story at this stage. In response to these letters of protest and concern from the villagers and us researchers, the Tanzanian Commission for Human Rights and Good Governance investigated the Mafia case from 2010 to 2012. Judge Manento, chairperson of the commission, explains their findings and conclusions. Tume uliona kuwa mwanzoni walipoingia watu wa hifadhi walishirikiana vizuri sana sana na wananchi kwanza kuwaelezea makusudi na madhumuni na faida watakazopata na kuwaelimisha wakaridhika hii ilitokana na kuwa eneo lote hilo ambao lilifanywa kuwa ni hifadhi lilikuwa ni mali yao walikuwa naitumia kabla ya serikali kuamua mwaka 94 kuwa iwe hifadhi kwa hiyo sio kuwa kulikuwa hamna watu wanaofanya shughuli zao na ushirikishwaji ukawa ukawekwa kisheria kabisa kuwa washirikishwe kwa sababu wao wataingia hasara ya ku chukuliwa eneo lao ambao walikuwa wanavulia na kama inavyoeleweka mambo wakaji wa visiwani kwenye visiwa vyovyote vile kazi moja wapo kubwa ni ya uvuvi sasa ikatokea kuwa hawathaminiwi tena baada ya mipaka ile ya hifadhi kuwekwa wakawa wanafuatwa wanapigwa na watu wa hifadhi wakawa wanatumia hata wanajeshi katika kuwa vunjia heshima zao au haki zao za kibinadamu tume ilivyochunguza ikaona kuwa ushirikishwaji umepungua au yale majadiliano ya mara kwa mara yakawa yamepungua kwa hiyo tume ilifanya mapendekezo yake kwanza kuwa jeshi lisitumike katika kulinda hifadhi tume ilipendekeza ni vizuri iwe elimu ya kila siku itumike 
ushirikishwaji utumike ili hifadhi ifanye kazi yake vizuri na wananchi wapate kile kinachowahusu ni vizuri utawala bora ukaendelea kutumika kila siku kwenye hifadhi kama ambavyo tume ili elekeza utawala bora ni masuala ya kusikilizana ushirikishwaji kutumia sheria na busara zitumike wakati mwingine sio lazima sheria na hekima ambayo tena atakubalika kama hukubaliki ukitumia mtoto wa bunduki well mada will breed mada it will continue forever yani mauaji yataleta mauaji mengine na yataendelea kwa sababu kila mtu atakuwa analipiza kisasi kwa maoni yangu mimi uh, swala zima la la uvuvi na ulimaji kwa mwani na hasa kwa kina mama ni sehemu ya maisha yao wanapoanzisha hifadhi lazima wachukulie kwamba hawa ni wadau wakubwa wa hii mipango ya serikali na wao ndio walengo wakubwa wanaotakiwa walindwe na, na serikali na maendeleo yao ndio yawe kiini cha serikali kuwepo pale hawa watu ambao miaka yote wameishi katika sehemu hizi za pwani sio wavamizi wao ndio watu wenye sehemu yao na wao ndio hifadhi wakuu Although we had been optimistic that such violations would never happen again, very surprisingly and sadly in January 2019, security forces were instructed to beat fisher folk and destroy their equipment along the entire coast of Tanzania. Suffering and trauma ensued. Fishers may occasionally disobey the law, but there are legal procedures to follow in such cases which do not involve beatings nor the army. Coincidentally, our university corporation had already planned a seminar with fisher folk for February 2019. The seminar was opened by the Honorable Omar Othman Makungu, Chief Justice of Zanzibar, and it lasted for three days. The village chairpersons, village committee representatives, Zanzibar Shehia representatives, urban fisher union representatives, university scholars and invited guests presented factual accounts of these unfortunate recent events and discussed the impact on and implications for people's livelihoods and then analyzed them in relation to long-term trends and research findings. On the final day, the delegates deliberated and agreed unanimously on a joint statement, which has been printed and circulated. Now, let's turn our attention to tourism. Tourism can offer opportunities for jobs and various incomes to villagers, but tourism can grab people's land, deny them access to resources, prevent villagers from benefiting from visitors, and pay low salaries. Inconsiderate kite surfing tourists disturb women fishers and seaweed farmers when they pass too close. Tourism can contribute to the national economy or it can be pervaded with leakages and corruption colluding with compradors in the state apparatus to further dispossess and exploit the people as a form of neo-colonial oppression. Jamba hili nimechukuliwa bila ridhaa yangu baada kuwapewa maamuzi yao tukaambiwa kwamba hapa wananchi leo hii ardhi ni ya serikali kwa hiyo cha kufanya hapa minazi yenu inauzwa kila mnazi mmoja ni shilingi moja na tano kama si hivyo hamtaki basi chukueni minazi yenu muondoke nayo na serikali itu, ituangalie mashamba yetu tumenyang'anywa sio hili tu na wengine na wengine na wengine kwa wenye wilaya hii ya mafia tourist hotels and the park headquarters hinder utanda villages access to the sea Cholem Gini Lodge grabbed part of the village school unique archaeological ruins and the women's market but in 2016 they were ordered to withdraw by the president's office In 2014 a Belgian diving instructor slashed the nets of a fisher but when this was reported to the park they only issued him a mild word of caution Hifadhi ya bahari wanasema wanaharibu mazingira mtu anayebeba msembe kwetu tunaita msembe nyavu za miguu anakuja kukamatwa eti anaharibu mazingira 
lakini leo kama utakwenda Big Blue unaweza ukenda ukakuta pale pwani pana vipala vya vyombo mwani uko kule huko kuna vipala wanashua vyombo vya lakini kwa kuwa mtu mweupe mzungu haharibu mazingira kabisa na kuna wazee wetu wana, wa madema wanasumbuliwa watu wa mishipi wanasumbuliwa watu wa nyavu wanasumbuliwa yani hakuna mavuvi lakini ile yote kwa sababu mgeni ajifarague vile anavyotaka yeye hifadhi ya bahari lengo lake si wananchi lengo lake ni kuboresha utalii mafia nani mfaidika mkubwa wa hifadhi ya bahari Mfaidika mkubwa wa hifadhi ya bahari ni wawekezaji wenye mahoteli. Tuliambiwa sisi hapa tutapata ajira. Loji hii mashua zote za wao. Je, sisi mashua zetu zitafanya kazi gani? Wenzetu kule Zanzibar wanachukua mashua. Mashua mtu binausi, gari ya mtu binausi atembeza watalii, hapa mashua kutembeza watalii, watembeza wazungu. Ajira hiyo tutaipata wapi sisi? Both conservation and tourism as now practiced on Mafia Island have too many negative sides. Fortunately though, we find more positive examples on Umbudia and Zanzibar and Guja and Pemba, even though negative instances certainly exist there too. We shall visit these now and hope that some useful lessons might be learned from them, with relevance to much needed changes for justice in Mafia. In 1998, the Fisheries Division agreed with a group of Kanduchi villagers to operate the Mbudja Marine Reserve. The villagers constructed small shelters with local materials as shade for the tourists. And they erected signs to inform visitors. This is the village of Kanduchi. We are very happy to be here in the village of Kanduchi in the village of Uvuvu. Wavuvu wengi wamelimika sasa hivi watu hawaji kabisa kuvua katika maeneo tengefu wakija hapa labda wamelimikwa na vyombo kwamba msaada za kuweka mvu yao kutengeneza mvu yao au kupunzika kwa ajili kuongoja muda kwenda baharini. Sasa kisiwa cha Mbuja ni kisiwa cha utalii. Cha kuja kuogelea kuangalia mandhari ya bahari na kuangalia mandhari ya kisiwa kuna wadudu wanaitwa tiuli kuna samaki ndani ya bahari kuna kula ndani ya bahari kuna Yaani mazuri ndio na bahari. Sasa tunatokea kumbuchi pwani, lakini tumekabidhiwa kisiwa cha Mbudia kulinda mazingira ya kuja. Sasa tuko pamoja na wadogo wadogo, tunao tunasaidiana kazi. Kuti makubwa pia tunajaribu kuwazuia ili tuwe pamoja tusikane kazi. Changanya na wavuvu pamoja, tusikiano kuzuia wavuvu wa wavuvu wa alamu. Kwa hapa muda mrefu kama miaka 20 na kitu kwa hiyo sasa naomba wenzetu tusikiane tufanye umoja huu wa wavuvu kama tuwe sawa katika a park employee purchases fish from a local fisher, soon to be delicious fish and chips. Mbudja has fine beaches and easily reachable coral reefs. Dynamiting was quickly stopped here in cooperation with villagers. Destruction of corals by heavy dragnets was also promptly halted. Researchers are impressed by the recovery of Mbudja's reefs. A juvenile angelfish bids us farewell from Mbudja Island, the social and ecological success story. Adjacent to Mbudja in Msasani Bay, these turns show fishers where to fish, and later the fishers share some of their catch with the birds. Sacred ibis are waiting for fishers to share some small fishes with them. There exists a symbiosis between the birds and the fishes. A traditional seine net brings the catch up to the beach. Seagrasses are not harmed by traditional seine nets. These seagrasses in Msasani have been fished daily for many decades. However, industrial trawlers would decimate them. Why do some conservationists and researchers blame small-scale fisherfolk for overfishing without rigorous and site-specific scientific evidence? Perhaps they invent a crisis narrative to justify their funding, and maybe small-scale fishers seem an easy target to blame. Now let's leave Msasani Bay and sail across to Zanzibar.
Here in Giambiani lies a small hotel which enjoys friendly relations with the neighboring villages. Local fishers frequently take hotel guests out sailing. Abdallah and his two apprentices host Selina Braxmeyer and Claire Gon. Abdallah shows them a coral nursery. <laughs> Although tourism provides some income for Abdallah, fishing is his principal occupation, often using demo basket traps. Abdallah get green algae with brittle stars as bait. The baited demo trap is then lowered into the water. Another trap, which has been there overnight, is pulled up from around 60 meters deep. This demo trap contains a large red snapper. Seaweed farms in Jambiani and Paje are an important coastal economic activity and livelihood basis. Euchima denticulatum contains valuable carrageenan for export, was initially a good income for farmers, but the prices paid to farmers have been kept very low by monopolistic transnational corporations. Monaisha Makame Simaya experiences that low prices make her life very difficult. Gina Heri was a skilled seaweed farmer but gave up due to low prices, as did many other seaweed farmers. Now we proceed northwards to Matemwe. Hotels occupy much of the shoreline and their walls often hinder villagers' access. Hotels do provide jobs, but these are often lowly paid with outsiders occupying the higher positions. To the north of Matemwe lies Mnemba Island. Mnemba is a tiny island with a large reef and an exclusive hotel. Villagers have the right to take tourists to Mnemba's sandbar and reefs. Bottlenose dolphins are fairly common around Mnemba Reef and they will play close to you if you stay still. The last part of our journey takes us to Raskigomasha in northern Pemba. This resort has a remote and attractive location. It has an exclusive underwater bedroom. Nearly all the 87 workers are from the two neighboring villages. pande wetu jamii hapa tunashukuru sana kwamba Manta ni hoteli moja ambayo inajali sana bwana kijiji inaziangalia zile changamoto ndogo ndogo ambazo ina uwezo kifedha au kinjia nyingine za elimu kuweza pia kuwasaidia kuingia tukao tuna walimu wanatoka wengine Afrika Kusini wengine wanatoka Australia wengine Sweden wanatufundisha kuhusu utalii na kuhusu service na masuala mengine ya hoteli pia lakini pia tukapata fursa za kujifundisha mpaka hotel management kwa sababu mimi nafanya kazi kwenye management kabisa. Sasa tukipata wawekezaji wa aina kama hii ndio wawekezaji ambao mimi nahisi kwamba ni sahihi wataweza kuwasaidia jamii nzima ya Pemba. 
Some villagers were more skeptical. Mimi nina masikitiko kutokana na uwekezaji kila mwekezaji anayekuja anajaribu kukutana na wanakijiji ili kuwapa ahadi ambazo hawawezi kuzitekeleza kazi yangu ni kufundisha wageni wanaokuja hotelini kwetu ambao wanataka kujua jinsi ya kuzamia baharini vile vile nafanya kazi ya kuchunga kusaidia kuchunga hifadhi ya tulioanzisha hapa Manta Resort kwa jina maarufu kwa nini conservation area ni hifadhi ambayo iko na eneo la kama kilomita moja kwenye mwamba wetu hapa karibu na hotel sisi tunashirikiana na wanakijiji vijana kutoka kijijini huja kupeleka wageni na ngarawa Some closing thoughts. Let us hope some of the problems that have been caused by ill-conceived management and governance in mafia may be improved by learning from better examples in Mbudia and Zanzibar. Conservation and tourism can surely be developed in ways that are more just, democratic and sustainable, alongside development of fisheries technologies. And... Rich researchers and conservationist organizations with huge personal ecological footprints may wish to think more carefully before superciliously condemning small-scale fishers for overfishing and seaweed farmers for destroying coastal resources in the absence of rigorous and specific scientific evidence. The people of Tanzania's islands and coasts will surely continue to struggle to assert their rights.